Crime has been on the rise here in Milwaukee for a while, and it's important to protect yourself and your home from intruders and criminals. Hi, I'm Mayten Martin. Welcome to Defend Your Home. On today's program, we will be discussing why it is important to be knowledgeable about weaponry and how to protect you and your loved ones from potential danger in everyday life. Many folks in the general public may want to resort to purchasing a firearm. However, many people also have an ongoing fear due to the lack of knowledge and how they operate and how they are portrayed in the media. That is how these firearms are portrayed in the media. There are other times people may not know how to properly shoot a firearm or even know the appropriate time to use a firearm in a life-threatening situation. It's important to have conversations about owning firearms in your home with your family should you decide to purchase them and for them to understand the proper use of a firearm, especially with children involved. Unfortunately, there are instances where children might accidentally get a hold of a firearm and not know the difference between a real firearm and a child's toy. Overall, it is especially important to have these conversations to ensure proper procedure, planning, and defenses against criminals. Now, before we continue, we'll take a look at a few recommended firearms for home defense. Hi, I'm Phil Brooks here at the Shooter Shop, uh, West Dallas, 84th Street. Just going to go over today a few guns that may interest you as far as uh, self-defense, home defense, or just personal security, or having fun at the range. Um, we have uh, some full-size uh, semi-automatics here, uh, some mid-size and sub subcompact size, uh, some pocket size pistols, and a couple of revolvers uh, that you can use for home uh, defense and self-defense that even can be uh, fun using at the range. So the next gun I'm going to show is, uh, is a Glock 42. Really up, compact, some people like to think of it of, as a pocket gun. Um, but you can carry it inside the waistband, you can carry it outside the waistband, you can carry it as a pocket gun. Really small, compact, it's a 380 caliber. A 380 is really only a nine millimeter short. Um, the cartridge is a little shorter, but the bullet in itself is the same diameter as a nine millimeter. Um, and with the self-defense rounds that they have these days, as far as uh, hollow points and stuff like that, the kinetic energy, the velocity, and all that stuff, and the expansion that they have, a 380 has more than enough, what people say, stopping power uh, to uh, get the job done if you had to defend yourself or whatever. And it's big enough to uh, shoot and have fun without having a lot of recoil in your hand at the range as well. Um, but again, this is the Glock 42 380. Um, very popular gun. A lot of the guys that work here at the shop with me own one of these themselves. Um, they don't fit my hand because my knuckle gets in the way of the slide. But other than that, I would have one myself. Um, and then we also have the Smith & Weston uh, Bodyguard, which is still even a little bit smaller, but still considered like a pocket gun or secondary bag up gun. This one, Bodyguard, uh, actually comes with a built-in laser on it so that you get into a situation and you can't get any on your sights. You just pop the button on, got your laser sighted in, wherever that laser is, 
and generally you can put the place that round there. Um, and the gun is clear, so I'm pointing it at my hand. But yeah, it has two phases, a pulse phase and a straight uh, phase like that there. But it's also, like I said, a 380 caliber made by Smith & Wesson. Very reliable gun, has a double action uh, trigger on here as well. The next two guns I have here are old, what they call wheel guns or revolvers. Um, very been reliable guns, for been around forever. Um, this is a three, uh, actually a two and a half inch barrel, uh, five shot uh, Ruger 357. A 357, if it's chambered in 357, you can also use a 38 special in it. If it's chambered in 38, that's the only round you can shoot out of a 38. Um, but very reliable, good concealed guns. Um, if, if a person has a problem with their hands or something or strength or arthritis and can't rack a slide on one of the semi-automatics or something, revolver, all you have to do is pop it open, load it, pop her back in there and squeeze the trigger. You don't have to worry about that. So usually when we sell in a gun, if we have a person, whether they're young or old, whatever, have an issue with racking a slide, we usually go with a revolver because if you can't function the gun, you can't use it. So these are very easy to function and some people just like the old school revolver and wheel gun and all that stuff like that. Um, and one of the newer modern um, revolvers here is uh, called the Bodyguard itself. It's the 38 caliber. It's made by Smith & Wesson, just like the uh, 380 Bodyguard here. And it also has a built-in laser already on here. So that when you um, get in a situation or if you're just target practicing, you can also use the laser instead of your eye to get off it on target and also has the same pulse phase as the bodyguard but this one's chambered in uh 38 only and it's a five uh shot as well really light and it's polymer whereas this is a steel frame heavier which in the 357 you probably want it to be a little heavier to help with uh, recoil control uh 38 is still a high velocity round but you could probably get away with it a little better in the polymer frame like they have here. But as a whole, all these guns can be used uh, as self-defense, home self-defense, concealed carry, or just fun at the range, plinking around, or a lot of these guns like the Smith & Wessons, uh, M&Ps and Glocks are used in a lot of competitor competition as well. You know, they may do a little trigger work and sights and stuff like that, but same identical guns for competition as well as self-defense or just having them at home for home self-defense. And that's pretty much just a short circuit of, um, you know, in general weapons that people like to use for self-defense and stuff like that. You, you still got your 1911s and stuff um, that you can use, but the more common ones are the ones that I just showed you today for all the basic uses. So next, we're gonna take a look at some um, rifles uh, that you can use for hunting or even self-defense. And so now we'll take a look at the next set of firearms that you can use to defend yourself. It's amazing how many choices there are to pick from. So here we have a uh, Remington 870 tactical uh, shotgun, uh, 12 gauge. Um, this one is designed um, as a tactical shotgun, basically for self-defense, um, a lot of law enforcement, and use this particular uh, 
style and barrel length for as a tactical purpose because it's a shorter uh, 18 inch barrel and it's easier tactically to cut corners and, and um, for close range situations. Um, with a longer barrel, you can hunt with it as well. Uh, if you were using this same gun for deer hunting, you could use it for deer hunting, even though it's a tactical gun. Anything within, if you're using slug, anything within probably 75 yards or something, you could still go deer hunting with it as well. Um, but it is a good self-defense uh, gun using a double eye buck shot or something at home um, in Remington. In itself is a great, it's a great brand that military and law enforcement has been using for a long time, the 870 and 500 Mossberg as well. And here we have the famous AR-15. Um, it shoots multi-caliber, a 223 or either the 5.56 round. Some people like to call it an assault rifle, but you can get the same caliber gun in a regular style rifle in a 223 as well as in here. These are sporting rifles. You use them in competition. You use them in hunting. You can use this as hunting just because it looks and it's designed and the platform that it has as a military grade platform, you can use it for hunting as well as self-defense and whatnot. Now, typically, uh, an AR-15 um, is not, I wouldn't recommend as your first go-to home self-defense gun because of the high caliber round. It's such a high caliber that it can go through pretty much several walls in two or three houses before that round can stop, depending on whether you have a full metal jacket or a soft tip or a frangible round or something like that. So because it's such a penetrating round, that's why I wouldn't typically use it as a go-to uh, gun unless I had a lot of hell being raised and I needed that much uh, round capacity or something in distance with this round. But other than that, it is a self-defense gun or can be used as a self-defense gun. You can use it as a sporting gun, plinking, competition as well. Again, you know, it's not the gun that is the threat. It's the person behind the gun itself. Um, but this is a this is the MP uh, AR-15 made by MP. This is the MP2. Very good gun. I own one of these myself. Um, they're great guns to have. Fun to shoot. This one here is just your basic Ruger 30 out 6. Here it's a bolt action gun. Pretty much um, a hunting gun. It can be used for self defense if you practice fast enough and learn how to chamber this off, fire and chamber it off and fire and get fast with it. You can put down an assault. You may not have that 30 round magazine, but some of them have magazines that you do low under here. And if you have enough and have time, you can get a lot of damage with this as well. Um, but it, it's a really uh, good hunting rifle. And again, it's high powered, so it's not a go-to self-defense gun because of the damage and velocity that it can do and penetration that it can have on this round. Um, this here is a semi-automatic. Semi-automatic meaning every time I pull the trigger, she'll fire and chamber another round in there from the magazine as well as an AR-15 would. Um, you just may have a 10 to 20 round magazine compared to a 30 round magazine. But if I had 15 10 round magazines or 20 round magazines and I'm trained with it, I can do just as much damage with this as I could with this because all you do is slap the mag in, chamber it, and fire it and go. But you don't look at this as an assault rifle. 
but you can use it to assault people as well. So when people in politics and things go and talking about assault rifles and banning them and stuff like that, that's not the problem. The problem is the person having better background checks, more mental health checks, different things like that with people buying a gun. That'll help. Criminals are gonna get their guns no matter what. What you're gonna do by setting all these different laws is stop the law-abiding citizen from protecting themselves against the criminals if it comes down to it. That's what, that's what happened with that. But you can raise an assault with either one of these if you have the proper training. And that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you for um, watching and hopefully maybe you can stop up at the shooter shop and have your own questions, more information. We're on uh, South 84th Street, two blocks south of Lincoln. Um, again, thanks for watching. Joining me now is Milwaukee Police Officer Monty Kirk. Uh, Mr. Kirk, I'd like to say welcome Hello. to the program. Thank Hello. you for coming. And we have some, some prepared questions for you regarding firearms and firearm safety, if you don't mind answering. You know, that'd be great. Um, there are a lot of choices, obviously, that we can pick from, but it's kind of nice to hear from a, an officer of the law like yourself. So for the first question, I'd like to ask, um, how are guns typically used in self-defense? Normally in self-defense, um, people purchase them depending on the model and size that a person can handle, handle for themselves. That's to be the main thing a per for a self-defense weapon okay. for themselves. And how they might use them is different, different reasons for, self for home defense, okay. concealed carry, okay. different varies on the, it's gonna be on a person okay. and what they really want to do with the weapon. Okay, so within the home, um, what are some of the s typical scenarios you see that do people just kind of keep them in a certain place or, you know? Yeah, normally with residents in their home, keeping them, they normally have them locked up or stored in the home. You might have a few people might have them in an open area, but normally it's always locked up, stored away where you don't even see the, the okay. firearm at all. Okay, great, great. If you have children, like about, like, like a lot of people, you know, they're like, well, I got kids. I don't know if I want to have a gun in the home. I got kids. But if they just decide I'm, I'm going to have guns in the house, um, when is it a good time to talk to children about guns and about the safety of the guns? I'm going to go with the parent on when their decision or when they're thinking. The youngest, the younger the, the child, the better. Okay. I mean, if the child is comprehending at a young age of four or five, that should be a very good time to instilling that safety in them. Okay. Like this gun is not a toy, you don't play with it. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you have gun locks and you store it or in a gun case, make sure the ammunition is somewhere else and not with the gun. Okay. Especially when young children aren't in the house. Okay, okay. Okay, now um, if a person, like there are many times when some people are like, well, I don't wanna have a gun, but I want to have something else that I can use instead of a gun. What would you say are some of the alternatives that people may want to resort to if they don't want to particularly use firearms to defend themselves? Well, we go with pepper spray. Okay. Um, that's legal to adults from 18 and older. Cheap alternative, you can get them at most sporting goods stores and Walmart. Okay. And then if you want to get to more expensive things like having a electronic control device. So we'll go with the, that's the state um, definition, but that'll be your local name of a taser or a stun gun. Are those legal? They are legal if you have a concealed carry. Okay, permit. I did not but know But a normal citizen cannot carry that. It's, you have to have a concealed carry permit. But the pepper spray will be the other legal option for okay. somebody that doesn't have a permit. Okay, so with a permit, if, if I'm understanding you correctly, you may not choose to have necessarily a gun, mm -hmm. but you can still have a taser. Yes. Okay, that's great to know. Okay, thank you. Um, what would you say, okay, I know we're talking about having a permit versus not having a permit, but what would you say, generally speaking, are illegal 
weapons to have. Well, that's going to be any automatic firearm. Most firearms are semi-automatic, meaning you have to pull the trigger. Okay. But a fully automatic weapon be just pulling the trigger once and it keeps going, so those are illegal. Okay, Throughout okay. the state and throughout the country. Okay. And then anything that's sawed off, like a shotgun or a rifle, if, the, if, if it's too short from the recommendations, or over 26 inches. Okay. So that's the minimum from that from stock. That means the front part of the wood area or plastic can be, and then to the barrel length of the okay. firearm. Okay, why is that? I mean, I understand the automatic one, but why, mm -hmm. the, why is the barrel length important? The barrel length is important because of concealability. Oh, okay. You see, the shorter it is, you can hide it. And then okay. you have a large caliber firearm Okay, also. okay, okay, so it has to be Short enough to conceal or short enough well, not that, to conceal? Or right, it has to be short enough not to conceal. And like I say, when it's that short, it's concealable and that's against state law. Okay, 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 gotcha. Okay, so in other words, if we just find out what the law is, have our gun, you know, if you have a gun, because I know that now all guns have to be registered. Is that correct? What is the no, process? No, no, there is no registration per se in the state of Wisconsin. Okay. So when you go to a gun store, you fill out an application. Okay. And it has your name and they run it in that. Then they also run it in the ATF. So the ATF has the serial number and the purchaser of who has, who bought that gun originally. Okay, ATF so meaning? Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. Gotcha, gotcha, thank you. So, but per se of the state of Wisconsin, we do not register guns okay, in the state of Wisconsin. Not. But once you, once, once you fill out your paperwork, you're saying it already goes through a it system. Goes, it goes to a system. It is in the system. Oh, okay. All right, it's just not in the system of the state of Wisconsin. Okay, okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. For people who are like amateurish and new to this firearm thing, what would you say are, are some of the safer options for people who are new to this and beginners with handling guns and firearms and the like? Well, I'm going to say go to <clears throat> a licensed um, gun a trainer. Okay. Firearms trainer. That's okay. what I'm trying to get out. Couldn't get it out at first. I got you. Just to get the experience in most gun stores have somebody's licensed firearm instructor there. Okay. Just to get that feel of their amateur. Okay. Okay. Um, let me ask you this because I'm getting the signal that we got to wrap it up. Okay. But my question to you is when is it legal or not, or not legal? to basically use a firearm should someone break into your home? Well, that's gonna be a different scenario question, but if somebody is breaking into your home and if they're about to do harm to you or your family members, then you're in the legal. Okay. But the main thing is that the person has to be trying to do harm to you or your family members. Okay, so not just breaking into your house is not then, good enough? No, it's not. That's not good enough. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And that, that's some new information for us. And, uh, you know, as you guys can see, there are, there are a lot of choices out there to pick from. Um, and those that you, that you saw previously, uh, the, the different firearms that were shown earlier in the segment, you know, it's, you, you have to figure out something that's, that's comfortable for you and your protection. Always try to find one, as the officer also said, that's a good fit for your hand and, um, and, and decent recoil for you. Am I using the correct word, recoil? Re recoil is recoil good. Recoil is yes, a good is. word, yes, okay. So another thing to take away from this program is to know that firearms are really nothing to be afraid of. They are simply tools to use for both defense and even sporting purposes. But of course, if you feel that they are not for you, then there are always alternative means of defending yourself in your home.